Welcome to the show. My name is Jeremy Poole and I'm the host of The Moment on Real Estate Social, where we explore and celebrate the necessary transformational process one must go through to achieve a high level of success in the real estate industry. Today we have the great pleasure of hanging out with Jordan Maton. Uh, Jordan is with Maton Real Estate Group out of Portland, Oregon. Welcome to the show, Jordan. Hey, th Jeremy, thank you so much for having me. Absolutely, absolutely. So Jordan, as you know, the show is called The Moment. What would you consider or characterize as being your defining moment that has allowed you to propel to where you are? I kind of heard a little bit about your story, but I'm really excited to dive a little bit deeper with you. Um, so please, if you don't mind, start from the, from the beginning. Okay, well, uh, yeah, my name is Jordan Mayton. Um, well, I've been in the industry for, let's see here, nine years. I grew up here in Portland. I'm a fifth generation Portlander. Okay. Um, and so, you know, I, I, I travel a lot around the world, but I've always knew that Portland was going to be my home. I, I love it here. It's a beautiful city. We're really fortunate. Yeah. Um, secrets coming out a little bit about Portland, um, but still one of the most affordable cities on the West Coast. So yeah. it it's really is um, a wonderful place to live. And um, But yeah, I mean, uh, like I had, I had talked to some of your people before, you know, I had, I had definitely um, struggled um, in life. And um, it took me a long time to get where I am today, and it was not easy. So... There were probably two major things that had uh, helped me over my, I guess, my moments um, per se. So, um, first of all, I'm a recovering addict, okay. right? I've been uh, seven and a half years sober, and uh, and it took me a long time to get sober. So I, I had started at a young age. I was a, a youngest of six. Um, different mixed families, you know, a lot of weddings in our family, right? <laughs> Not a, a lot of divorces too, but we had a lot of weddings. So there was a lot of partying and. Um, and, you know, so being introduced to, to drugs at a young age, you know, 13, 14, and sure. getting into that lifestyle, um, I never, never finished high school. I don't mm. have a high school diploma. Really? I do not have a, a, a GED, you wow. know. Um, I ended up, uh, I've been in six rehabilitation centers um, in my life. I've spent over a year and a half in uh, rehabs of, of some kind. Um, I've been in Mexico um, in a behavior modification program. I've been camping in the deserts of Moab, I've been. That sounds fun. Oh yeah, that well, you know, yeah, it sounds fun. <laughs> um, yeah, but I mean, uh, you know, Serenity Lane, I mean, I've been in every, all of them, they, they know me, I'm a, I'm a big deal in the, in the recovery community, you yeah. know, so it, it was a really tough go. Um, mm. I ended up going to, I got, I, I ended up not, I wasn't getting sober, I ended up going to college while still using and drinking and, and drugs and whatnot. Um, but I, I, you know, I, I like to think I'm relatively smart, so I was able to get through. Uh, I mean, I ended up getting. I went to you know Lane Community College, and then you know U of O, and, and ended up getting out of uh, getting out of college. And that's what, right at the end of college is when I decided to kind of get sobered up. I I couldn't live Why? the way that I couldn't live the way that I was living. Like I could not function anymore. Like it just was not possible. Um, you know, I was onto some pretty bad stuff, and dealing with some pretty bad people. And it was just not sustainable. Um, and it was brutal. Wow. So my first sobriety date was March 15th of 08. Um, and my sobriety date now is January 3rd of 10. You know, it's, it's, uh, was it September of uh, 2000, or October of 2017. So it's been a while. Um, and I bounced around. Those first 18 months were brutal. Um, <laughs> then on top of it, you add that I, you know, actually did graduate. It took me only five and a half years. It was awesome. I loved college. Um, as like you can tell, and um, went into real estate in September of 2009. Interesting. Um, Why did you choose real estate? Well, you know, I had seen an uncle that had done some real estate. Um, he ended up moving to Arizona, but he, you know, he would jump from building to building. He was on his phone. I got crazy ADHD, and mm -hmm. so the idea of meeting with people, the, the beautiful buildings, yeah. um, there's decent money. Um, helping people, just being in that community. The whole lifestyle. Yeah. yeah, and I thought it was like, you know, you know, hey, I got my license, like come work for me, right? Yeah, or right. come, you know, I'm yeah. ready to sell your house, come give me the keys to your million dollar mansion. Sure. And I'm 24 years old, uh, you know, I don't have anywhere to live, really. Um, and I got a real estate license in September of 09, which happened to be the lowest sales 
um, in the Portland metro area mm. for the last 50 years. Wow. So when I came out, they were just starting the, the, the Obama tax credit. Yep. So everyone yep. was trying to get that credit. Of course, no one could qualify. Super aware of uh, that whole thing because that's when I started as well. I oh, started, yeah. Uh, at like uh, right at the beginning of Q4 of, uh, of 2009. So it's just, brutal. It's terrible. It's brutal, especially on the mortgage side of it. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, no one. Yeah, it's like, uh, yeah. It's, yeah. Everyone's so. losing their their homes. They're yeah. not buying homes. Right. So I mean, I I actually ended up joining one brokerage. I didn't have training. I w went to another one. I ended up struggling with my addiction again, and um, because I wasn't being successful, sure. and I almost got out of it. And I jumped around for a while. I didn't sell any real estate for two years. For two years. And I was full time. You hear that, folks? For two years, yeah, so like nothing. What did you do for two years? Well, I was lucky enough to meet some some people in um, recovery that um, okay. you know uh, let me live with them. Um, you know, since I was working mm -hmm. and I was going after it, I had some family support, but it wasn't. Right. It wasn't. I mean, they were they loved me, but it wasn't. They weren't giving me money. Sure, you know what sure, I mean. Sure. Um, and so, I just had to pound pavement and. You know, I ended up joining a team. I ended up getting fired from that team. I ended up trying to build a team. Why that, were you fired? I ended up getting fired because I didn't sell enough. Wow. It was a short sale team. It wasn't a good fit. I only sold one house in three months. It was my mm. first house on Snapdragon Lane. I made $1,011. It was my first sale in real estate. It took two years. Wow. Um, and then I ended up, I built a, a real estate team. Um, it was right when that big social, you know, it was all about building content. Sure, sure, Dale sure. was doing gotcha. that 365 days to, you know, right. to blogging. And so I hired four writers. We were going to town. So how do you go from not selling any homes to, to building a team and hiring four writers? Well, I had come into a little bit of money from my father. I, I had okay. come into a little bit of an inheritance. Um, it was about $60,000. So it wasn't okay. like, you know, amounts of money. Sure. But I burned through that in like well, nine months. Going from no money to 60000 thats That was a big deal. Yeah. Yeah, no, it was a really nice deal. I, I burned through it. Totally, by that point, I was totally clean. Okay. Um, my sobriety is great. And I was in better shape than I was, am now. Mm -hmm. I mean, things were going great. Um, I live a pretty clean life now. I mean, yeah. I don't really sure. do any anything. I don't smoke or anything. But yeah. it's but no, my life has really gone in a, in a, a pretty proactive. In fact, most people that know me, they they don't even believe that I used to drink or do drugs at all. Yeah, no, it, it is pretty hard, pretty hard to believe. Yeah, so I, uh, so I tried to do that. That wasn't very successful. And I ended up, my second moment was when I ended up for the, I don't know, 17th time failing mm -hmm. and going to a brokerage. And I met Alicia and Garen Selican, and they own a little brokerage, a boutique brokerage called M Realty. And um, Garen sat with me at 30 minutes a day, uh, or 30 minutes a week, once a week, and we'd go over numbers, basic numbers. How many people did you talk to? How many people did you ask a real estate question of? And, and, and you know, open houses and contacts and that sort of thing. Right. And I wanted to go over my first script. This is one of the things I planned for, right? <laughs> and it was, because that's when the first script I ever learned. And Garen sat me down and he had one of those counters on his iPhone. And it was like, you know, how many counters, you know, how many times would you say the script? And he taught me one script. And the basic idea was, is when you meet somebody, they mm -hmm. ask you, they say, I say, hey, what do you do? And you'll say, you know, oh, I, I do the moment, right? Yeah, right? And then you'll say, well, what do you, you know, what, what do, do you do? do? Right. And I say, I'm in real estate. And they always ask the same question. It's, well, how's the market? And that was the, that was the, the thing. I asked them, the they always ask me, because yeah. I just stopped talking. Right. And, well, it depends. It depends on your plans. What are your plans? Mm. So I would literally, Garen had me do that 100 times every single day for an hour, sitting in the mirror in his office. And right. I wouldn't, and that was it. Like, I couldn't do anything until I did that. So I did that over and over and over again. And that's how I became the script master king. Interesting. Like I ended up getting into some coaching programs. I ended up getting really intense on expireds and FISBOs and canceled, getting in at 7.30, you know, listening to Eye of the Tiger at 7 a.m. and, and <laughs> getting on the phones and calling those expireds and going door to door in the afternoons, so doing three hours, 300 miles a day to every town, every house that expired that day. Good um, for you, man. And so in three weeks, I signed five listings. I signed up for the coaching program. Um, I have since become, that, that, that is my listing model. I pound pavement, that's what I do. Phenomenal. That's a fantastic story. That's one of the uh, most daunting um, hills in terms of the moment I've, I've heard. I've heard a bunch of stuff, but coming from, if you don't mind me saying, that low of a place, I would imagine your self-esteem is probably in, in the gutter 
You're, yeah. You're not selling any homes. You're being fired. That part was really tough. Yeah. And you have to say, Jordan, can you do this? And somehow a voice inside of you, I'm, I, I, I imagine that first was probably a whisper. Yes. Look, yes, yeah, it is, you know what I mean? I didn't have anywhere else to go. Like, yeah. I, I didn't know what to do. Yeah. That was a lot of things. And unfortunately, now I feel like there's an abundance of training. Yeah. Um, but like today, back then, there was, I mean, I, my, I remember one of my first brokerages, the guy literally handed me yellow pages. Wow. This is like 2010. I mean, this is in like the 70s. Jeez. So, I mean, I didn't, I didn't know what to do. I, 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 I was just barely on my own two feet. Um, yeah, and it was really tough. Um, but what, I, what I've also found, though, is that, you know, one of the things Garen told me, and um, he said that the only thing you have to change is everything. And when he told me that, he was a, a, a real estate uh, a broker owner, whatever, of yeah. a brokerage, right? And I remember exactly the moment he said it to me because it was oh. like, oh, I've already done that. Yeah. Like I've already changed all my friends. I've changed everything I do on a daily basis. My health, what I eat, how I wake up, how do I go to sleep, like right. everything. Right. And I was like, he's saying about you know selling real estate and how living a life. And he's like, what he's asking me to do is th this in comparison to what right. I've done. Sure. Um, and so I just did it. And that's actually, the, you know what? Honestly, Jeremy, that's the number one thing that I've always done. Um, I've hired a coach, I've listened to YouTubes, I've seen videos like this, I've watched all your videos. Thank you. Um, and I just do what I'm told, man. That's like, awesome. Like, it is not rocket science. It's not. <laughs> it's really not. Um, it's, it's- Plan your work and then work your plan. Yeah, I mean, we, every, everyone, so, so, so that's our team, right? We all get in at 745. Everyone on my team does 15 hours a week, no matter what. It's log time on a dialer without question. Good. Um, and we hold each other accountable and it works. So we just do it. That's phenomenal. Yeah, I mean, that's, it was just that simple. I don't know. I love it. Not, not easy. Yeah, not easy, but simple. <laughs> Very simple. Yeah, yeah. That's, thank you. Um, build on that just a little bit more. How has your mindset shifted or changed, evolved, if you will, from the time that uh, you were all too eager to use drugs to now all too eager to make that mighty dollar? Well, um, if that's even your driver. You know what? It was at the beginning. I ain't gonna lie. Sure, you sure, know, sure. I was into making money. There, I, I've had people, you know, that's, that's something that I've been called out for in, earlier in my career. Mm -hmm. um, people that know me today, yeah. I don't hear that as often. Um, and it was about making money, mostly because I didn't have any, mm -hmm. right? Sure, sure. Um, money yeah. can solve a lot of problems if yeah. you don't have any. Yeah, right. but I mean, at this point, I mean, I, I'm not a wealthy man. I mean, I still live. I mean, I still live way beneath my means. I live 700 square feet basement apartment in North Portland. Like, I it's not wow. sexy, you know. I got a couple nice things, but mm -hmm. for the most part, I, I live pretty small. Um, but I mostly live for for. I really want to build a bigger organization. I really want to help the people within my organization That's grow. Great. I mean, we have some amazing talent that I've. I'm mean, just so wildly fortunate to be able to work with, um, you know, my director of operations, Alicia, and, and all my agents on the team. And, and then to have some of the agents that maybe aren't in my organization, but are close friends that, 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 that counsel me and support me. And I mean, I'm so incredibly blessed. And so I wanna, at this point, you know, the growth that I wanna do is so that they can have the lives that they wanna live. Right. And in, in turn, uh, you know, uh, systematically help their lives and their families to grow. And so I, do, do I want more money? No, I'll take more money. You know what I mean? But yeah. that's not really the, what yeah. gets me up in the morning. To yeah. be honest with you, when I was a single agent or had an assistant, you know, I was not very regular. But as soon as I hired another agent or brought on an in my second assistant or you whatever, on it. Well, I had to be. Right. Because if I didn't show up, they weren't going to have the business that they needed for yeah. them to be able to feed their families. And that was a real mind shift for me. Because now it wasn't like, Oh, I'll be fine. I'll figure it out. Now right. it's like, no, if I don't show up, you have people depending on you. Yeah. Well, and, how are they going to yeah. feed their kid? You know, yeah. I mean, it's, it's a whole nother, another game, you know? So we, so that was a big, a big mind shift. That's great. I know that your team is growing. Talk to me a little bit about your team dynamic. How many people are on your team? Oh, um, is there yeah buyer agents, selling agents? We did do the buyer seller agent model for yeah. a while. Um, split it up. And we ended up just just letting everyone do everything. Okay. You know, um, 
you know, I, I do take on a lot of the listings that come from the team. And you know, we're starting radio soon. That's going to be something that I'll take on. Great. A lot of the online leads, the sellers, I will take them on. And yeah. I've done a buyer here and there for sure. I still take care of people when I can. Um, but so right now, let's see. So there's I'm the lead listing agent. I have a director of operations who's Alicia. She's a superstar. She's been with me for three years. She's taking her, her uh, principal broker's test in, in a week or two. Good. Um, we're also licensed in Washington, Southwest Washington. And then um, I saw Natalie's in Washington. I have an agent there. Um, and then we have, let's see, three agents in Portland and uh, uh, two admin staff, right? Um, and yeah, I mean, everyone um, comes in, they do their prospecting. We've started doing opens. That's something that we've, in the last couple months, we've started yeah. to, I mean, look, we're going back to the basics. I mean, I, this, this is a, a contact sport, right? You know? Very much so. Yeah. I mean, it's, we, we prospect every single day. We track personal. everything. Oh yeah. So, you know, belly to belly, toe to toe, <laughs> right? We can keep, we can do this all day. Sure. Um, no, it's. So, so making, reaching out to people um, and, and creating a relationship is, is still the, the most important to a real estate yeah. organization. Um, so we go after that um, with a fierceness and we track our numbers religiously. Yeah. So I know exactly how, if, how, you know, every time I, someone picks up the phone and, you know, tells me hell no, or, yeah. you know, I know what that cost is and I know what, um, you know, the cost of taking a listing. And we really run that business like a business. Fantastic. What surprised you the most about achieving success, if you would consider yourself? I mean, you are successful, so I know you probably have bigger aspirations, <laughs> but uh, what has surprised you the most? Um, well, I, I don't really consider myself successful. I mean, I, I, uh, I guess it's what your definition of success is, right? I, right. You know, I mean, it's, there's monetary success, which, you know, I think I have a taste of for sure. Um, and then there's there's true success. You know, I'm a single man. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'd like to eventually get married, have yeah. kids. You yeah. know what I mean? Right. Like I'm I'm 32, so I'm relatively young. Great. You know, for for the sales or whatever. Um, but what's what's I guess that it's it, that it isn't about the money, man. Yeah. It's like Gary Keller said that it's not. What is it? It's not that the money. What you can do with them. It's it's not the. the what money can do, but the good it can do, right? Mm -hmm. And and money can do a lot of good things. They sure can. You know, I mean, you can help a lot of people. You can create some great organizations, and and so, I think that uh, that having the opportunity to um, help other people is is where really where the success comes from. Good man, that's fantastic. Jordan, who's your biggest inspiration? <laughs> man, I don't know. That's a great question. Yeah. Uh, Robert Downey Jr. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, uh, yeah, Iron Man. Hell yeah. Uh, you know, there's a lot of great people. Um, you know, I mean, you had Nick Shivers on the on the show recently. Sure did. Um, and you know, it's funny because I I didn't I used to uh, not be a big fan of Nick's, and uh, we ended up going into the same brokerage and. Um, I got a lot of respect for that guy. He does a huge, I mean, just a crazy big business, right? Yeah, he's a great guy. But he gives so much back. He right? does give a lot back. He's a big figure. Um, he's just a good guy. He's a really, really good guy, and he gives so much back. I yeah. mean, to, he's got the Sell a Home, Save a Child program, mm -hmm. and I just think that's a phenomenal organization. So I look up it to is. him in a lot of different ways. Um, you know, and so, so that's one. I mean, that's a very, very local mm -hmm. one. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm always, I'm always inspired by people that are able to, to, to give more and to, are able to make their lives ab about helping others in different ways or growing others or growing their communities and not necessarily about like, hey, I just bought a Lamborghini, you know, <laughs> check out my watch, check out my, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. That's just... And that's a, a, unfortunately, it's a very American thing. You sure, know? sure. I mean, it's all about the flash, right? right? Absolutely. Well, I think I think initially, when you're in a a somewhat survival mode, yeah, uh, there are icons you probably have in your mind that uh, come from material affluence. You know, yep. you want the watch, you want the car, you want a fatter bank account, you want the beautiful girlfriend, or whatever it is. But I think once you've got some of that stuff, you realize it's not as delicious as I thought it would. Or no. if it is as delicious, that delicious flavor fades very kind of just as fast as you got it. As soon as you move in, I, right. I, you get a right. nice luxury car, you stand in it, after a week, it's just a car. It's you don't a car. even notice yeah, it anymore. It's, it's normal, baby. Yeah. Um, 
<laughs> but that's what <laughs> that's what we're we're we're, we're finding on the show is that everybody sort of reach, reaches this plateau. Yeah. And once the success continues and continues and it grows, you kind of go deeper into this place of purpose yeah. that drives you and sort of catapults you to a whole another level of success. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like that sort of happened to you, that you got to a point where you wanted the money. You, you probably wanted to prove it to yourself, prove it to your friends, prove it to your family. Like, look, I'm not the loser you guys think I am. I'm, well, just, I mean, I'm I, just struggling with something. I fell. The, the, the problem with addiction is that it, I mean, it is a disease. Um, in its own right, and but it's the, the disease that makes the person that has it, it's like everyone hates them. I mean, if somebody mm -hmm. had cancer, you don't hate the person with cancer, sure, right? Sure. So, um, so yeah, I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm the guy that got kicked out of high school that, you know, I've been kicked out of brokerages. I mean, I've, I've struggled for years, mm -hmm. um, you know, and I've had a lot of humility, and I've mm -hmm. failed. I've failed crazy amounts. I mean, like just, I mean, it's just like every single week, every single day, every single phone call, mm -hmm. right? And, um, but if it wasn't for that failure, I wouldn't be where I am today. Right. And if it wasn't for the fact that, I mean, it was about for a while, it was just like, I'm gonna prove them wrong. And now it's more just like, I'm gonna prove myself, right. you know? And that little, that little voice in my head that says, I'm not good enough. Mm -hmm. You know, you got, dang it, I am good enough. There I do go. deserve there this is, and I brother. deserve to, you know, to, to live a life. And so much more. Yes. So what's, what's next for Jordan? I mean, we're coming towards the end of 2017. Yep. Which I'd imagine was a good year for you. A little um, bit, yeah. What are we going to see different in, in, in 2018? What's well, going to blow my mind in 2018? I'm, I'm going to hear like, Jeremy, well, the big secret, the big secret that's not even that that's why you're releasing this in a week or two. Right, right, right. <laughs> is that I'm opening my own brokerage, right? Woo, yeah. Let's hear about it. So I, I haven't signed a lease yet, okay. um, but it's, I'm, I've looked at it. I'm in negotiations. It's, a, it's, it's a nice space. Good. It'll be a, a mega team office basically. Um, and we also, I have already signed the one in Vancouver. Wow. Um, and so we're going to break off on our own. You Good know, for I, you. It just is, it's time, you know, I, I've been really like the vision, I'm the visionary and uh, Alicia is the integrator. If you ever, anyone's read The Rocket Fuel, um, it's a book. So uh, it's a phenomenal book. And, and so I might, I, I plan out the marketing, I plan out the, the, the mm -hmm. vision of attack and then Alicia usually reins me in. <laughs> Here's um, what's actually possible. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, we are yin and yang. We yeah. fight like cats and yeah. dogs, but she is, is a saint um, and yeah, and, and we're going to go for it. You know well, you should have brought her on the show instead of hawking all, all, the, all the light. This whole time I was thinking <laughs> it was you. Well, she, I am super outgoing. She is, is very analytical. Yeah. Um, you got to have people on your team that are really, really good at the stuff you suck at. I'm extremely public about, uh, I'm good at a few things. Oh, yeah. Probably like one or two things. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then I got people around me that are amazing at the rest. I, I'm a barking you know? dog. I mean, that's yeah. all I am. There's yeah. nothing sexy about me. I mean, I, I, I'm i really true. great at that. Well, I, you know, not a, yeah. But no, it's, I, I have to, uh, you know, I needed somebody who was a, a solid figure, who was consistent, who came in Organized day in, day out. And, and so I'm excited about that. I, I'm excited about opening a brokerage. I'm excited about growing. Yeah, I guess I'm opening a brokerage. We're selling a lot of houses. I got a lot of team members. We're looking at some cool things, right? I just want to make sure that everyone is super clear. I can't sleep at night. Mm -hmm. Like it is some of the things that we're doing right now. Yeah. I mean, we we've tripled our ad spend, almost quadrupled our ad spend. I mean, we are taking some gigantic risks. It's not always just, yeah, I'm crushing and I knew I would. I'm the best. <laughs> you like, know, in the last three days. Tough. Oh it's, yeah, in the last three it, days I decided to open a brokerage. It's this is scary. You know, mm -hmm. this is scary, right. um, you know, but it's, it's messy and it's, and that's real estate, man. Like I, it's not, there's 60 days out. I don't have a paycheck coming in 60 days. Right. And right. I, I don't know if they're in, every one of my team is an independent contractor. Right. They can leave whenever the heck they want. Yeah. So there's no promises. Right. So I just really got to make sure that, um, that the numbers make sense. Like. The conversion rates are, 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 I'm really being conservative mm -hmm. and know the fact that I'm going to sacrifice and I sacrifice a lot. Um, but it was something Garen said to me um, at M Realty um, and Garen said, it's, it's hard work consistently over long periods of time. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not it's simple it's, stuff. It's grueling. Simple stuff. Yeah. Well, Jordan, thank you so much for your time, brother. Thank I really you. Appreciate I really it. appreciate the opportunity. Thank you guys for watching. If you're interested in joining his team, reach out to him. Otherwise, thank you again, and please tune in next week. We'll see you then.